and welcome to the Ms. Artastic channel. Uh, if you are listening to me currently on the podcast, welcome. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, welcome there. Uh, for both of those, uh, know that there is a free printable available for you in this episode. So make sure that in the podcast description when you expand it, Uh, Click the link that says blog post show notes or if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure that you click the YouTube description below the video. So below the video, underneath there, expand that YouTube description and my lovely friend, the very first link you're going to see is called blog post show notes. Click it and you're going to go right to MsArtastic.com where you're going to find the blog post that corresponds with this episode and there you're going to find a free printable challenge. But what am I talking about? All right. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the best end of year low prep art lessons for your classroom. Um, And also it is going to, I'm going to give you, I've already made it a free printable art challenge for your kids uh, to make super low prep, but also a lot of different art lessons all on that one page that you can implement, give student choice, and give you the freedom that you are needing right now because I know that you are so tired. (laughs) So my friend, just hear me out. I got your back. So let's dive in on this episode. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. All right, so end of year is fast approaching, and I know that as an art educator, you have a lot on your plate. Um, You're also end of year tired. Nobody understands that feeling except for teachers. The stretch, like that feeling of energy and then the stretch to Christmas is exhausting, but then right after that, there is in like a whole whirlwind of things that happen, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh my gosh, it is the end of the year. <laughs> so, I have you, I got your back. I first of all, I'm not even just gonna cover low prep ideas, I'm gonna give you like action items for things that you're gonna do to make your life so much easier at this end of the year. Okay, I'm gonna give you some clear action items to focus on because I know that right now it's a final stretch. You're tired, it's exhausting, and you just want all you wanna do is leave. But my friend, if you listen to this, I'm gonna have you not only set for the end of the year, but also ready for back to school right before you leave for vacation. Okay, so let's dive in on the best low prep end of year art lessons and I'm going to tell you how to get that free printable challenge. You can just print right off instantaneously for your classroom. So let's dive into it. So the first is getting, so we're, okay, first of all, we need to get into the end of your mindset because I know it shows up like that, right? It just shows up and boom, it's end of year and everything's expected all at once and it's going to be completely crazy right till the end. Um, so end of year just always seems to creep up on us and we are in the busiest part of the school when suddenly the last day of school is like only a month away and a lot has to happen. Not only do you have to tidy up your classroom, like maybe you have an art show that you're expected to plan, whether it is digital or actually a physical, um, like actual art show (laughs) and you have to finish units, uh, make sure that you got through all the curricular competencies and content, but also you have to have smaller art lessons planned to uh, wind down your year, right? You gotta have those art lessons because you can't just have the kids just sit there and be like, well guys, it's testing, we're prepping for that, blah, 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 blah. Um, Do nothing, sit there, occupy yourselves. No, um, you actually have to have lessons planned that also are not too big because you're trying to get your classroom all tidied up and polished. Before the end of the year, you don't want to get out acrylic paint. Um, And also, uh, you, yeah, we just need to have lessons where they're still learning, but they are feeling engaged because we know that the end of year wiggles are happening. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's lightly put um and yeah so 
and plus they really need to be flexible, right? These lessons, not only they have to be smaller and also last to the last day and be applicable for that, but also um, they have to be flexible because the timeline at the end of the year is ever changing. Things always seem to pop up or you have to plan for things or integrate. Oh, by the way, uh, next week is field day or as we call it here, sports day. Um, as well, you are trying to reorganize and declutter the classroom so that way you have everything torn down and ready to go prior to your vacation time. Um, there is a lot to do, so having some low prep, easy to do, but also engaging and impactful art lesson ideas truly is the way to approach that final stretch of the school year and don't worry I got you here we go so first of all let's just talk end of year so we're winding down the classroom so you really need to wind down your classroom starting around a month and a half to the last day and I like to add on extra because the last weeks really um, sometimes are taken up by testing um, or like school-wide initiatives or activities or classroom parties or whatnot, right? So anyway, I am not saying that you should make it known to the kids <laughs> that winding down is happening because you do not want to lose them um, and have them go wild with excitement. I'm lightly putting that. <laughs> but you should start ending big projects and begin to organize and declutter and go through your own checklist of what needs to get done before you leave. And this might be getting rid of things in your classroom, decluttering, decluttering, um, the, de getting rid of things in your classroom that you haven't used for years. So like anything you have not used for a year, gone. Donate, give it to the next newbie teacher down the hallway, whatever it is. Put it in the supply room, like the communal supply room. I don't care. You need to get rid of it. So recycle old filing cabinet handouts that have been passed on and are now out of date, right? We all know, um, you know, there was a thing where, you know, people like to gift you <laughs> resources or and you really needed them at the start. But now... Maybe you don't need them anymore and it's time to get rid of them. Uh, they've been photocopied too many times and now they just look silly because you can no longer read them. Anything that is out of date or is from an old curriculum or you, or you haven't used it for a year, you no longer need it. You didn't use it. So recycle it, please. Um, this should also happen on your computer, like recycle old files or your downloads folder, I'm sure is stuffed. We all hit download on things. And then what happens? We like never declutter the downloads. We never, well, if it doesn't get sorted into another folder, we do not use it. Or we have already printed it and filed it into a binder where we are, we are, where we are using it. So please clean out your files. It will make your computer run faster. And I guarantee you that if you haven't opened it in a year, you will never ever use it okay so go through art mediums in your cupboards and drawers and clean and organize if you are too afraid to get rid of things honestly get your students who help to help sorry who are ahead and who love to help they're the ones who want to come up to you and say can we help you with anything i love to help those kids get them they are the ones you know who i know you know who they are right now on the i can say who would be good to help you organize your classroom? I know you're thinking of a student right now. You probably have a group of them and they're probably so good at that job. Okay, get them to take ownership of your classroom. Have them wash the drawers, have them help with cleaning bins, reattach uh, fallen labels. If you've like, sometimes you know when you hot glue super cute laminated labels to bins and then all of a sudden like at the end of the year they have fallen and you just haven't had a chance to get hot glue them on. Um, we'll get kids to like tape them or attach them in some sort of safe way. Um, have them wash and clean paintbrushes and pull those bristles straight and dry them with the bristles, bristles to the sky, uh, and declutter, give them to per permission to get rid of things that are no longer usable, right? If they're dried out, glue sticks, like completely hard paintbrushes, all those things. Um, ask them to go through things and get rid of them. 
if they're no longer usable. And if they are unsure, ask them to come and show you it or have them put it into a pile of like uncertainty pile and before you go through it and recycle it yourself. But trust me, they are probably right. All right, complete paperwork or assessment. So get all of your assessments and paperwork that your district or administration wants done. Get it done earlier than expected so that way you can relax in the last weeks. I know it's not relaxing. I'm really, that's an understatement, but it will be a lot more relaxing than if you put it off till the end. So just get it done earlier and that way you can peace out for vacation with your mind at ease. The longer you procrastinate, the worse it is going to feel when you are approaching the deadline. So just do a little bit each day before work and then you'll be done in no time. All right, my favorite, and honestly, everybody thought I was insane for this, but I know it's insane. However, it felt amazing. It felt amazing, okay? And it's it's a game changer, honestly. Prep your back-to-school game plan! Woo! <laughs> okay, again, I know this is insane, but make it a routine to write down or even photocopy some things for back to school. Um, you can keep it as simple as a one-page Google Doc that you type on your phone and say, day one, this, day two, community builder, day three, art-themed icebreakers, day four, creating name art, day five, exploring line and pattern, okay, whatever. You can, keep, you can make it that simple or you can make it a bigger bigger if you want. Like you can even do it all digital where like you download your, your you get your TPT um, purchases, you put them into a folder that's back to school, right? Week one, day one. Put the um, PDF or whatever format it is into that day one folder and that will be your, your digital master. Um, day two, this is what they're gonna do. Day three, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe day three is like finishing up day one and day two stuff. You can just put a note on there. Day four, and like keep it almost the same for almost all your classes. They're going to be going through a whirlwind of shock coming back to school. And they're not gonna remember that even if they did this the year before in your class, they're not gonna remember. They're not gonna remember. No, they won't. I guarantee you they will not. And if they do, they're going to be so much better at it a second time. <laughs> um, or you can have like an A and B year, like half the class, you know, like grades, uh, even grades do a plan and odd grades um, do B plan. You could do it that way. So that way they rotate and then they definitely will not remember. <laughs> But I believe in planning once and being prepped. And especially for something like back to school or end of year. Like, I'm not talking about reteaching a curriculum. This is a get to know you routine, right? And setting up expectations and setting up rules and routines. And that is going to be the same every year. You're going to say, you're going to have a set of rules that you're going to restate every, and practice with your kids for a month every single year. So that would be part of your first week, second week. Well, I mean, if it's rules and routines, you'll be practicing for at least a month. But that's the um, whole plan there. So if not, you don't want to do it digitally, um, write or write them down, right? So have a written plan uh, that says week one, day one, day two, day three, week two, at least, you know, do one week and then print off and attach the master copies and just put a post-it note on each master that says day one, day two, day three. So that way when you return, you run that through the photocopier copier, however many times, same sheets for all your classes, um, and paper clip them together and they're ready to go. Or at least have the masters ready. Um, if you're needing back to school resources, my teacher pay teachers store has at tons. There's even a whole printable workbook that you can either use as a workbook or use as individual handouts that are designed for an art classroom. So if you don't want, you just want to hit uh, print and go and you just want to walk out on your last days, but on then also have back to school ready, you can just go to teacherspayteachers.com, search Mizartastic, or if you are looking at the blog post right now, um, you will see this in the um, blog post show notes. I will put the link there. I am currently typing it. The link. Okay. 
So I will put the link there and you can go right to my Teachers Pay Teacher store. But essentially, if you're on TeachersPayTeacher.com, search Mizertastic and in the categories on the left side of my store, click back to school. You're going to scroll through the pages, find the workbooks. It's so good. I'll even put it into there on the direct image on this page. Anyways, um, so yeah, have it all ready to go. And that way there is no um stress right you're going to leave for vacation already knowing that week one is planned and done or at least that you have a concept and the master copies of what you're doing that way when you arrive for back to school after vacation your first week is already done there is no planning on your vacation uh there's no super early stress going in right um there's uh no fighting to use a photocopier just relax if you want to this is a good time i guess to do any classroom decor if that's your thing right because now you have bonus time right we don't spend classroom decor excess decorating when we have other focuses but if our focuses are done and our targets are hit then we can do those kinds of things so um yeah so check that out make sure that you have week one done that is an action item uh, that is essential before you leave have back to school week one done you will thank me, trust me. Okay, low prep end of year art lesson ideas. So I know that's why you are watching this right now. So I know that I said I would talk about some end of year art ideas. And then I went on a rant about things that you need to know, but honestly, they are so important. Um, you didn't ask for them but until I told you. And they are so important. And I know that if you do them, you your world will transform and you will feel confident. You're gonna feel ready for the year. But if you really want to level up your back to school for next year, you will get the art curriculum that will transform your life forever and have you saying, I am done planning with your enrollment in the curriculum. So Artastic Collective Art Curriculum for Art Educators opens for enrollment on August 1st. So August 1st every year. Check it out, artasticcollective.com. You, you should go there right now, preview the art curriculum. There is a ton of information and videos there. Um, artasticcollective.com or just Google Artastic Collective. Um, so many educators have already experienced a transformation and stress planning and you can be next. There are also some really great freebies there. You can try out three free art lessons from primary, middle school, in elementary uh, the curriculum is for those grades and you can check it out try it out and then put in your phone on the calendar to go to artasticcollective.com august 1st because it's open for enrollment for a very limited time and my friend the cost of enrollment in january when it opens up in the following year most likely is ha is going to go up so you're going to want to make action on this right now all right, so the ideas that I have for end of year, the first one is observational drawing scavenger hunt sketchbook assignments. Okay, so everything is going to be very choice based. Uh, you can do it. You can decide if it's going to be done in sketchbooks unless you're marking them. Um, you could be doing it in duotangs with paper. I don't know what you call a duotang anywhere else in the world, but it's those folders that have the little metal prongs. <laughs> I, I only know them as duotangs. Maybe they're just called folders, but I don't think they're called duotangs everywhere. I don't know. Maybe they're, I don't know. Anyways, uh, if you have the answer to that, I would love to know. Um, so yeah, duotangs and, or you can just get them paper. It's really up to you on how you want to do this. And you can either give them to choose an art medium from their pencil box. That way you're not having to, you know, get out everything that you have already put away for the year. Um, and then, yeah. So the first idea is to do an end of year art lesson um, scavenger hunt. And you're going to set up a scavenger hunt for either things to find. So uh, either the task cards that have prompts on them or actual objects. And you can do this same scavenger hunt with all your classes. Just keep it simple enough, but have the expectation for the observational drawing be the thing that changes, right? So even though we ask the kids in all our classes to do the same prompts or the same scavenger hunt, our expectation of what they draw and create is what's going to change. What I expect from somebody in grade 10 will be starkly different uh, from somebody in grade three. 
okay? Very different expectations. And also the amount of time they will spend at those ages on those things is going to be very different. Um, so yeah, make an anchor chart or a graphic. You can just go onto Canva um, and you can then project that graphic onto your board or whatever on your screen. Um, and it will have five to 10 things that the students will have to find and create observational drawings for with a choice medium. Yes, build in student choice and in their sketchbooks or on paper if you want. The point of hiding the task cards is to just add another layer of engagement or movement into the classroom during those end of year wiggles. As well, it'll create a roadblock for the students and, and it might just drag it out over a couple of classes. <laughs> so <laughs> the whole point of adding, hiding, okay, the, there is no educational benefit of hiding task cards and having them find the same prompts versus writing them on an anger chart. Um, you can laminate the task cards, but also, it's, it, it's more of a social emotional thing. You're going to add movements, right? So now they have to move and you're integrating movement into the classroom. So that's good for the whole student. Um, also, it's just engaging, right? You're just changing things up. It's unexpected. They're going to be excited for it. They're already checking out at the end of the year. As much as we don't like that and that's what's causing the end of year wiggles, we have to accept that truth. So we're just finding different ways to just throw them a curveball and they're going to be unexpected. They're going to be like, what? And it's just going to be so silly. And they're just going to go out on an adventure looking for it. And it's going to make them want to draw because then they ha they can't move on until they find the next one. And then, yeah. And you can be like, oh, guys, you got to keep it a secret, which will um, will or will not work depending on the age <laughs> of the kids. It can, you know, high school kids are probably be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, or they might find it fun too. You never know is what I'm saying. You might have the same reaction from somebody in K as high school. <laughs> And then the in-between grades will be totally stoked. I don't know. I'm just saying there's options of doing this, okay? Um, and just have fun with it. But then prep it once and keep it forever. Like if it's an anchor chart, put that, roll it up, or put it in those big anchor chart drawers and keep it forever. Or if it's task cards, laminate them and put them in your end of year folder so that way you can use them every single year. Um, anyways, so no matter what uh, you choose, whatever method of implementing this you choose, give them a list of things they must find and draw, either written on the task cards they must find, and again, use them year after year, or on the anchor chart or graphic. Um, again, if it's a graphic, you can project it in your classroom or put the link to it um, as a QR code on your whiteboard or uh, just email it to the kids or put it wherever there's a shareable thing and they just put it on their phone, like honestly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that of course more for high school uh, or probably middle school. I don't know. I, it's been a while. I haven't been in a high school for a while. So, um, at least I haven't taught in a high school since kids had phones. So there's that. And I am thankful for that. Oh my goodness. I don't know how, I don't know how high school teachers do it with TikTok now. It has to be terrifying <laughs> for so many reasons. Anyway, so distracted right now. Okay, so give them a list, so no, matter, no matter what you choose, give them a list of things they must find and draw um, or put it on the anchor chart. <clears throat> Ideas could be, can include find and draw a view from a school window, find and draw a stubby pencil, find and draw a crunched up piece of paper, uh, find and draw your friend's shoe, but also turn it into a monster. Uh, just be creative with it and add in the odd twist um, to keep their... Um, to keep the kids excited uh, about just doing it. Yeah, we just wanna, we're just trying to do anything to keep them excited <laughs> or not too excited, I guess. Okay, next one is to turn your whiteboard into a choice board, the whole thing. Okay, so on your whiteboard, or again, you can do it on Canva, save the graphic, project it onto your whiteboard. That's an option. Um, and then you can use it every single year and just type it once. I love that idea. Um, or you can make an anchor chart. Again, you can put it away, use it every single year. The idea is that we do it, we plan it well once and we use it every single year. That's my theme here. Um, draw 
a grid, like a tic-tac-toe board on the board or make it in Canva. And in each one, write a drawing prompt. And then over the next few classes, kids must choose a prompt and a choice art medium to create. And they have to create three of the nine prompts on the board or in the graphic that you've chosen. Again, you can send it to them if you want. Um, not only will this last a few classes, but it saves you planning time and it, you can again use it every year, but it gives student choice. Again, student choice, you're not getting out your paints and a whole bunch of art making mediums, right? Because you're packing up your classroom. So don't get out anything. <laughs> Let them use what they have in their pencil boxes, honestly. Um, and then they can even do this in their sketchbooks if you want. Um, oh, and when they're done, they can always do a fourth one for bonus marks. Oh yeah, or a sticker, or just say it. <laughs> I don't know, you do you, right? Do what you need to do to survive is all I am saying. It's just, what I'm saying is that there's a built-in when you're done. Okay, next one is to do end of year art challenges with a free printable. So similar to Inktober, create a list of things that you challenge the students to draw. And this is perfect as a sketchbook assignment. Um, that is a drawing challenge, but also is one that you can use every single year. And it's also low prep because you only need one list and you could even project the list onto your whiteboard. You don't even have to print it if you wanna save paper um, or you're out of printing money. Um, just project it. Or again, you can send it to kids' devices or put it on the school blog, whatever. Just just saying, like, you don't have to, all of what I've, I've given you are all things you don't need to photocopy for. You don't need to photocopy anything, so it's low prep, right? And you can just make it once, use it every single year, and that is the idea. And they don't even have to use any art mediums in your classroom. These are all gonna last a while. They can use their pencil box stuff for all of it. Anyway, um, so yeah, low prep, you only need one, li one list and the rest, the students will take care of in terms of mediums and paper. If you want, you can offer some sort of completion initiative, in not initiative, incentive. <laughs> Bonus is that I already made you a list that you can download here for free. Again, if you are listening to this on a podcast, it is in the podcast description. Click the blog post show notes link. It is under the paragraph. It will take you to my blog. Scroll down the blog until you see end of year art challenges with free printable and a big orange button that says download the free end of year drawing challenges. And that is the same if you are watching me on YouTube. Just go into the YouTube description below this video. Click the link below the paragraph, or you gotta expand the description a little bit, probably. It says blog post show notes. Click that link. It will take you to the blog, mizartastic.com, where I have tons of amazing art ideas coming out all the time. As what I spend my day doing is thinking about how to help you. Um, and then anyway, scroll down. You can get that list right there. And that is essentially gonna take care of your last month of school prepping needs. That whole list, like if you assign that, it's gonna take them <laughs> done. One month in that list. Um, and I'm not joking, that will take care of the month. So uh, that way, while you have that one list done that you probably don't even need to print, you can tackle the things, um, the list of things that I gave you at the beginning that you need to take care of um, before you leave for vacation. One of those being finishing up your classroom, tidying up, right? If they are drawing, you can be moving around the classroom, chatting with them, but also tidying and organizing them, right? Like you can go get your paintbrush bin or whatever you need to organize, take it over to a kid's table, chat with them while organizing, or um, take your binder over there and work on your first week of back to school while floating around the classroom and sit, I would encourage you to sit at, try and sit at every single table in every single block. And then just, if you want, you can multitask, right? Cause they're focused on these, my crazy list. Um, they're focused on their assignments. They don't need, they don't need your help to prep. They have gone through an entire year with you. They know the expectations. So they're gonna be working on, you could put on some music, honestly. You could put on a live cam. If you go to explore.org, Oh my gosh, go to explore.org and put on a live cam. There are like eagle cams, there I love the underwater cams. 
You can watch any animal live cam on there. There's kitten rescue cams. Explore the arc. Put on those. And then the kids will be mes- mesmerized. You'll probably be mesmerized. It's so fun. Um, I love them so much. They were, that was like my favorite teaching tool <laughs> for like just creating, like taking down the atmosphere. Um, explore.org. But it's also educational, right? Um, it's not like you're, you're not toning them down with, uh, I don't know, a cartoon. You're not putting a cartoon on, right? This is an educational actually happening live um and then they can be drawing and then you can be getting your things done yes and then chat them up it'll just be nice it'll just be a good way to end the year just total social emotional learning there and you don't have to prep for the rest of the month you have that whole month to do what you need to do and also have that first week planned for back to school okay that is your goal that is your action item (laughs) for the end of the year here and honestly, like, yeah, take care of that list that I gave you. I'm sure you have your own things that you also have to do that is more specific for where you live, the grades you teach, the schools that you teach at, um, your admin and district expectations of you. They're all different. I cannot speak on behalf of every every single school district. and um, But I can anticipate uh, what is probably needing to be done. Um, but I am here to help you level up your art teaching boss game. So hit the button, download that list next, download the list um, of the free art challenges with free principal, and then I will see you next time. This is Ms. Artastic signing out. And P.S. Don't forget to go to artasticcollective.com and make sure you get on the wait list to join my art curriculum. And I'll see you next time. What if you didn't have to plan art lessons?